Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. I'm your host Faison Flux and I must say it feels pretty good to get back to recording since I had to take a short break because this recording that I'm doing now has failed multiple times due to software glitches. Now I don't think it's as extreme as my computer crashing, however it kept causing audio desyncs, which is the first time this software has given me problems. So I'm not sure what's wrong, but hopefully it's fixed. Now starting things off here in stage 6, Olive Ocean. I'm going to show how difficult of a fight this is. Because of this water down here, it makes it incredibly difficult to move around. And very easy to lose your power. Now that's a problem, because you actually need the hammer or stone ability to get the switch in this level. Another interesting thing to note is that Olive Ocean has a switch in every single level. Oh man, this is so difficult. Why did they make this... They should have made this the final boss fight. You literally can't do anything when you're on the ground. And it makes it difficult to absorb the apples. And I'm dead. So, I just wanted to show how difficult that fight was. It's not even mandatory. What is mandatory, however, is, as I mentioned, the hammer or stone ability. So, since I don't think I can leave... No, I can't leave this stage because I haven't beaten it yet. I'm going to go ahead and beat it off screen and come back with the hammer power. So, I'll see you guys then. Alright guys, I'm back. Um, if you lose your hammer power, like I do a lot, then just go back to the previous stage, stage 5, and beat bonkers in the arena to get it. And sorry if you heard my phone drop there. I'm not very nice to that phone usually because I just drop it a lot. Now, hammer isn't used just to get that one up. As I mentioned, it's mandatory for a switch. So, it's actually found in two rooms for now. Gotta be really careful. This is a very difficult stage in terms of getting the switch just because of how useless the hammer ability is. So you had to destroy that cement block there to have access to the switch. That's pretty much all there is to this stage. I will go back and get this one up though. Because I feel like I need it. And now, yeah, I could care less about the hammer ability. See ya! Now, one thing I do like about Olive Ocean is it's a water level. <laughs> okay, I can't really say that with a straight face. Oh, I hate water levels in video games. Except Majora's Mask. They did a really good job with swimming mechanics in that game thanks to the Zora Mask. Anyways, I'm off topic. The reason I like Olive Ocean is because this entire game does a really good job at escalating difficulty. I feel like I say that in just about every part of this Let's Play, but I do mean it. Olive Ocean is a huge step up in difficulty from the past stage, and it's only going to get more difficult from here. So, in the copy museum that you obtain from the Switch, I wanted to show off that it gives you the wheel power. Now, normally most copy museums give you a power that is somewhat required in the next stage, but in this case, that's simply not true. It really, really isn't that useful. Now, if you enter that little secret alcove right over here to the left, you get a free stone power. You just gotta be careful not to move. Now, the stone power is actually, once again, mandatory for the switch. Oh, I totally hit my uh, B button. Stone is a lot laggier in this game than it is in previous or in subsequent games because there's, whenever you're transforming into stone, there's more frames of vulnerability, which means that you can be knocked out of being turned into a stone much easier than you can in, next, in the next Kirby games. So stone isn't quite as useful as it normally is. Normally stone is one of my favorite powers in Kirby games because it's really just broken. But, continuing on, we're gonna go ahead and ditch it because we got the switch in favor of Super Kirby! 
Faster than a speeding missile. Stronger than whatever the boxing guys, yeah. The fighter things. I don't really know what it is. Although, there's a secret UFO here. Come here. There it is. Makes getting through this place a lot easier. I wish, once again, that you could keep UFO Kirby. But unfortunately you can't. When you leave the stage, that is. I get to keep it for the rest of this room, but that's about it. it kind of makes things easier in terms of skipping stuff, but ultimately there's better rooms that UFO Kirby could have been placed in, I think. So that'll do it for stage two. Put that stake in the ground, Kirby. Now this next stage is completely on a boat. It reminds me of the um, airship levels in Super Mario Bros. 3. At least this very first room does. I don't know, it just kind of has that feel to it. This room actually has a very tricky, or this stage has a very tricky hidden switch. Which I, as usual, will show off. You, once again, need either hammer or, instead of stone, you could use burning, because the cement block you have to destroy this time around is actually to the side, and it's right up here. So see, stone wouldn't cut it there. You either need hammer or burning. So, you do that, you come down here, and what happens when you're on a boat and you hit a bomb switch? Well, it puts a hole in the hide, and... A hole in the hole, I mean, and it partially submerges. The switch, or the room, is actually kind of difficult to find, I think. So, it took me a while to actually find this switch. But, you gotta be quick. Uh, okay. Basically, the goal is go into this right room here. And your goal is to absorb the laser ball. There we go. The reason you need laser power is for this room over here to the left. Now whenever you've seen cannons previously, you've always gone for the firepower, but that's not going to work here. Since the fuse is underwater, you have to use laser to bank the shot, and you actually got to be kind of quick. Okay, whew, got it. Now I'll take you right to the switch. Boom. Now we can make like a tree leaf. I can't believe I just said that. Anyways, continuing onward, I completely skipped stuff. I will come back to that room in just a second. Now that room that I said I was coming back to actually isn't mandatory, but it's got two nice little secrets in it, so I'll be right back there. Alright, here we go. This room has a lot of different doors. And so, we came in from here. And coming down here, you'll see two little windows, portholes in the ship here. You can actually go into them, and when you do, you get one-ups. So that's all I really want to show there. It's a nice little hidden secret. I think it's cool. So, back to the stage. Okay, um... I always liked this room as a kid because it felt so open. I mean, Kirby's just flying around the sails here, the ship. There's nothing really to it, it's just a zigzagging up room, but I always liked it nonetheless. And at the very top is a Warp Star. Maybe it was the Warp Star, I really liked the Warp Star when I was a kid, so maybe that's what sold the room for me. Now I've only got one life, or one hit. What hit me? There's nothing on screen there. Not a thing. Okay, it must have been the Scarfies. Where is it? No, the, the Scarfie doesn't appear right there, so I have no idea what killed me here. So, um, yeah. Anyways, glitches aside, because <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. We are done with stage 3. Now, I don't really think we have time for stage 4, but we will finish up level 6 Orange Ocean in the next part. 
So, hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you then.